Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hanger. This is Mike. Today we've got a knockoff, a KO figure to review today to talk to you about. The thing is, this is the Fugu, the FG01. This is a knockoff of one of the ones that was made in the past. I've For all of the detailed information, I'm going to have a link down below at Show-Z Store where you can get yours too. But this is the KO that's been taking the community by storm the packaging looks so awesome and retro the figure itself is really cool and there's an absolute ton of accessories now it's a hundred dollar 150 dollar figure uh remember th viewer code when you go get one but it is sold out now there's supposed to be a restock in 2025 and so this video is hey if you're going to see the good you're going to see the bad the pluses the minuses but overall it's a pretty decent figure let's get into taking a look at this coming up So we'll start out looking at the packaging and comparing it to my vintage childhood one that yes I bought myself. And I want to point out that it's very similar, but it's not exactly the same size. In fact, I'm going to show uh, that it's a little shorter, well, lengthwise, but it's very close to the original size. Uh, that is impressive. And you can just see right here how it's almost exactly the same, the top. And then the sides, I mean, they, they copied this so close to what Hasbro did back in the day. And it's very, very impressive. Shouldn't pull it by the flap. Very close to the Hasbro one. Out of the box, there's an absolute ridiculous amount of parts. So behind this is what you kind of see in there. There's this, it's a packaging of extra parts and pieces insane amount of stuff plus and now for the one low low price you get all of this we will throw this in for free you get a stand in a separate box that's packed inside of a bigger box that's shipped in you get the clear pieces you get hands just an insane amount of parts it is it is quite insane all right here it is right out of the box and there it is looking pretty good I think that they did a really good job with this. I like the way it looks overall. I like the opening canopy on it. I like the brightness of the white. Now, I'm used to most of the Jetfires have a little bit of fading to them. So this is right out the box, super bright white. Looks really great. You and Spacey. You got the skull and crossbones on it. Very nice, very nice. Looks everything I'd expect out of a Jetfire. Do you want to point something out? Okay, you got to fold these out. Right out of the box, if you want to get these uh, landing gear out, you need to open this that direction. This one opens this direction. And then you need to get them out of there. Probably going to need a little help of a tool or something. I am a tool myself. Funny story, I actually broke my spudger. So I don't really use spudgers so much. That can close back up, have it a cleaner look. We can do the same thing on the other side. Now as for this front one, pretty much the same thing, but we just opened the flaps like that fold this bad boy out oh, I say that now he's not one to fold out fold it out just a second ago just fine there it goes now I'm not sure about this flap here but I assume it just braces it so that's probably a good thing and there it is the landing gear out rocking out with the landing gear out and I, I don't know it feels like that's as far as I'm gonna go with those, but those feel like they just don't wanna go all the way out. But yeah, still, hey, look good looking overall, lots of fun. All right, so here it is compared to my childhood mitt in the box uh, version of Jetfire. And I was gonna go fold these up and it, it just was way too hard. I felt like I was gonna break it. I'd be devastated if I broke that. It's just going right back in the box just like that. But I just wanted to show size comparison. It's not too much smaller than it. It's just a tad bit smaller in the jet mode we'll wait and see how much bigger the vintage one is i believe the vintage one is a, a decent size bigger than this one but still this one isn't as small as i thought so it's pretty cool that it is as big as it is for the price it's definitely seems to be worth it so far so the next thing i want to do is get this guy armored up so let's kind of bring everything a little more into focus on this and 
first thing we can do is put this on. Now all you gotta do is kind of spread them a little bit on the arms, slide it in, and then the arms will tighten back up and hold it in place. Maybe you wanna give it a little pinch. And there's the gun in there. And then we have a lot of these other things that we're gonna add to it. So the next step we need to do is fold these bad boys back in however they originally were. And then this is going to untab. And so the weird thing is that we are going to untab right here. And this tab right here, this tab here, and then tab on the side. There it goes. And that knocked that out. Maybe I'll wait and put that back in after we get the armor on. Well, actually, yeah. So we showed you how to put it on like this, but with the armor on, it's a slightly different. But anyway, uh, pulling all this stuff out and down is the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this piece on and then we're gonna put this piece on to here, like so. And so I did got that side warmed up, yo. So on the other side, we can put it on by sliding it. There's a notch in here. So I gotta figure out which side goes to which. This slides over this, and then you tab it in, which I guess I should have shown it from this angle. And then the screws shown out like the ugly side, the, the side where all the, all the, you're seeing how the sausage is made. That's what's gonna connect uh, this other piece here. But we're gonna wait, and I'm gonna put uh, some, the clear stuff on before we connect that one. So we'll do that here in just a moment. So next we need to do some stuff with the arms. So we're gonna pull the arms down a bit. And really all we're gonna do is just connect this. There's a, there's a slot and a tab. It's like a slot and a tab piece that this is just gonna tab into. And you, it's, it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. Uh, it's gonna be real tricky to get it on camera without like further transforming it. You might want to partially transform it before you do this, but uh, it just slides on. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna get that on the camera. So well, let's uh, can we get it from this angle, because you're gonna push it on like this without breaking it. And there it is, it's on. Do the same thing on the other side. At this point, you can attach the gun and I think it's really not that big of a deal, but now with a little extra layer in there, it's going to be a little bit extra of a deal probably. And then you're going to move this down, notch it up, and then this tabs in to the there. So instead of it being straight and tabbed into the leg, it's now tabbed into the armor. And in order for that, you have to bend the knee down. So that's, that's something different. That's definitely something different. And for that, uh, we can push these back up into here. So to get those back into here, let's see if the gun's gonna hold better. Yeah, the gun actually just kind of slides in and out, but now it's not holding. Once it's all together, I'm sure it'll hold together better. Now for the translucent parts. All right, I wanna do the translucent parts in a separate clip in case I have to re-record it. So there's pull this off and then uh, this, I got the ball rolling already but you need to kind of pull this out and up and it seems like it's it's flexing plastic but you do get to see all of this great detail they put on the engine which is something that you don't get with a G1 or you probably got this with some of the other Macross stuff some of the other Robotech stuff that's out there I don't know but that's kind of a cool concept that they've done it and then we also need to grab the wrong part out but the whole point of this whole exercise is so that we can see all the inner stuff but still have kind of the uh, the red part of it now I'm not sure one of these goes to one side and the other goes to the other so that's this one would go to this side and I would think that the transparent pieces are even more fragile than the non-transparent pieces so just be careful with all of this and mm, Needs a lift up and over. Up and at them. There it is. It's on there. That looks good. That looks really good. So then the next thing is that you would need to clip this onto here. And then 
This could go all the way in, and since I'm not ever going to remove it, so let's get it in. It feels tight as heck. That's good. That's good. Tight. And then get that last tab in there. Woo. Sounds kind of rough. And then we're going to add it to the top of this. So uh, let's get the side piece done first. So how do we do this side piece? Well, uh, I just found, and this may sound terrible, but if you pull on the tabs, you get the party started. And that worked for me. All right. And then this piece here, clippity clips on. And then that clips to these two tabs here. Nice and easy. And then this clips the tab to there, but you have to transform just like a tad bit of a notch. And there we go. There's that. And then fold this flap down and we need to insert this. Now, it's gonna go into here. Uh, if you have, if you don't have just uh, absolute, complete and total butterfingers like I have right now, butterfingers, now all this stuff's falling off. All right, anyway, I'm gonna mess around with it. That's kind of the, that's, I'm gonna mess around with getting it tightened up. Now getting the stand in, we are going to kind of pull down on this and wiggle this out so that we can plug in the stand. There's two tabs and two holes, a hole here and a hole here. And we're gonna work that into that hole into there. And then this is gonna get worked in to here. And uh, that's kind of the process. Then we're gonna close it all back up and I think, yeah, there it is. That's how we're gonna, it's best to have the stand in there and then I'm gonna go back and redo all the stuff that we just had done. Lots of fun, but I think it's better to have the stand in now than to wait until later and try to do it again and then redo a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, there's that. And then uh, again, we're gonna just go back and plug this in to here and it plugs in, tabs in, push it up. We are pretty much there. And then with this, uh, this fell out of mine. I, I don't, I know why, because they want articulation in it for whatever reason. I don't understand what they need articulation in this piece for, but just push it in and it holds up fine. But why does that need some articulation? I'm not sure. Does this even roll? I don't even know if it rolls, but here it is in the armored up mode and it's armored up. We can pull these wings out and then we can add on these pieces to it to, I guess, finish armoring it up. And uh, I guess I didn't even show we could clip. I've shown where we could clip this in. I'm just not gonna bother with that again uh, because it's not gonna stay in this mode much longer. And yeah, so I'm not sure why this stay, doesn't wanna stay in. I, there it is. Yeah, this doesn't wanna stay in. It'll hold fine. I'm just gonna put it in once we get these on here. But you have all these slew of different missiles that we can put in here on it. And with that, you can do four doubles. You can do four of the quadra missiles, and you can do four of these clusters. And then oddly enough, I don't see four. No, uh, nope, I see. If you wanna take these off, you can have four of each of the black ones, black and the red tips. So that's possible too. So a lot of the stuff is kind of basic. As basic as it is, I think I have those on backwards. But uh, it's basic. It just plugs in like this. But I think people probably want to see that. So there's that. All right. So here it is all armored up with all of that good stuff on it. And you get to see the missiles launching. You get to see... The contrast of the solid pieces versus the clear pieces and that is really cool looking overall now the clear pieces like to pop off a lot easier than the uh, full color pieces so the it's opaque and then yeah there it is from the back you can kind of see those engine thrusters from it being armored up this could sort of fold down a little bit more that likes to fold up on me but yeah it's pretty cool so so far Pretty solid figure, no die cast in it that I've seen. 
but that piece falls off. I would probably glue it if I was going to uh, use it in this mode more. But once I get it transformed up, it's staying in bot mode. Do you want to show you can put a pilot in there? Which I'm not. I don't know if I'd want to leave the pilot in there because he'd probably rattle around a bit. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of back from the Diaclone days or something along those lines, I guess. That uh, I have a little something like that that's in my wheel jack for whatever reason. But there it is. And then. I didn't really mess with it, but it looks like you get an extra seat to swap out. So you could put, for whatever reason, an extra seat in there. That's Take that one out, put this one in is what I think this is, but I haven't really done it, so I'm not really worried about it. All right, this is compared to the Matchbox uh, 3.75 inch scaled Veritech Fighter, and although they don't have the same color scheme. This thing is way smaller, way, way smaller. We need a jet fire that's made with a cockpit that you can put a 3.75 inch figure in. That's all there is to it. I mean, even if the cockpit is, it barely fits a 3.75 inch figure, somebody somewhere needs to do it. This company might be it. This uh, stockoff company. Come on, you can do it. You can take this and turn it into this, except bigger and a little bit different shape. Now for the stand, you can plug this into here, and then this can plug into here. Now you don't have to have it in there. It's not a necessity, but it, it is a thing that you can plug it into. But this stand has very hard ratchets. I think this piece, one of these pieces is die cast, but you still have to go up higher to plug it in. Now you remember we put the stand adapter in already so you would want to place this into here and although it's not a hundred percent necessary to have those other pieces it is kind of nice though but actually i didn't transform this back all the way 100 percent from girl mode with everything tabbed in it does work a lot better but i do see kind of why they have these other pieces here on the side to help you hold it up if you like that, I don't exactly like that though, but it is pretty nice, pretty good stand, very solid overall. You don't have to have those side pieces on if you don't want to connect them, you don't have to connect them, but now that I've kind of see it, yeah, it's it's gives it a lot more stability so that you could do different stuff and then you can angle it to the side and you can have it kind of however you want um, on that but yeah pretty cool stand overall I'm not really big on stands but this gets the job done if I were to display this on the stand uh, before I move on I, I took this piece off I wouldn't really want that piece in my display and I want to see how this would work without that piece and so just kind of showing what it can do and how the setup would hold just without that, just like this, because all that extra stuff isn't very pretty. It's not very elegant. This is quite impressive, and it's very, very sturdy. And the ratchets are, are hefty, so you need to be gentle as you're moving them so you're not, this thing's not just getting slammed around, but very good stand. Very good stand. Now for Gerwalk, we're going to fold this precious piece here up. Oh. Got to open this, open the little compartment, fold the landing gear in. I remember when I was so optimistic about this landing gear. Get it put away. And then we are going to start with transforming it. We need to get the legs down like about so. And it's double jointed, reverse double jointed. And then we're going to bring the arms out. So we need to bring the arms out. As you can see, there's a sliding mechanism in there that just slides the arms out. And they got to get past this point to come all the way out. There it is. Just keep on coming. So it seems like this sliding mechanism, you have to pull down on it as you're sliding it around to get it into place and then same thing over here so we can see it from this angle where there's the mechanism 
as it is coming and then as I pull down on it to so if it stops you just kind of pull down on this a tad bit so it could keep going and then we are going to embark on well, I guess we should close these up too. Uh, landing gear put them away and these pieces folded back in on me somewhere along the way somewhere out there I do like with these covers they're not just on uh, like a hinge on the side they're on a hinge on the inside there so that they can fold back in and flatten a lot better so that's a it's a nice touch on that and then this disconnected, it's not supposed to disconnect for, so you can just push that back in for the gerwalk mode. And then this is ratcheted right here and tight. I always say it's wretched when it's that tight, but it's wretched, ratchet. Uh, we probably should do something with the feet so it can start standing on its own. So you gotta pull the feet down and uh, fold it out. And they're nice and ratcheted too. ratcheted pull the foot down without knocking all your stuff off and then here it goes and then let's get the let's get the legs together still where they're kind of at the same level all right so we're going to move this over here, get this arm sort of into place for the gerwalk mode. Then we have to fold out the hands. Typical hand fold out situation, as we almost always see. But there's some big hands though, so getting them out. Don't be too handsy with the hands. I'm trying to get them out here. Might not be as easy as it looks. Because they have this extra piece on here. We're going to add, we'll add it just a little bit with the screwdriver just get the ball rolling get it started. we got to get it started here. Do the same thing on this side. Here he is in his gerwalk mode, and uh, it's sacrilege to admit this right, but I'm not a fan of gerwalk mode at all. I feel like it's just halfway through the transformation. They said, let's do another mode. A lot of people that are fans of the gerwalk mode say, well, it's uh, it was engineered to do that. That was the whole plan all along, was to have this girl walk mode, and I'm not a fan of that, but... There you go. Girl walk mode. Alright, so picking up from the girl walk mode here, we are going to... I'm going to detach this, because I think that uh, the transformation will be easier without this on. And when you want to take it off, it holds on the best. So... We are going to need to do a couple things. We're going to unhook this, untab this, which kind of wanted to come untab when we were going to Gerwalk mode anyway, and untab this. And then when we untab this, I guess let's go ahead and get the arm to the back a bit out of the way. We want to go ahead and get the landing gear, the stand adapter out of the way. And then, yeah, I guess I got the arms in the way right now for this. So this is gonna come down and rotate down like so. And then we're going to get the legs straightened up into kind of a standing position that we're gonna need him in his standing position. At this point, he could probably stand on his own. A little bit of messing around with him. He can stand on his own. We're going to come right out of the back. And you can push this piece up. And then with that we can disconnect the tabs. So the way it's set up, we're, we're going to have to pull this section out. It's very similar to G1, actually. In all reality, there's so many similarities to G1. Which says the G1 was pretty good. Like, it's to... The head popped off. To just use a lot of the G1 stuff is uh, a pretty big compliment. Now, I'm curious, though, if I could pull off this transformation without this piece coming down. Because I think you could do it either way. I think you could do the transformation with or without this uh, 
piece here coming out. This piece here is on, on a slider. So you're going to slide it out and then it's going to come down like so. And then we've got the head right there. And then this is a weird part. Now I'm going to get the uh, <laughs> parts forming people are going to come out of the woodwork and maybe rightfully so. All right, so this is parts forming and I don't really know how I feel about this, but it is what it is. So you take this piece and make sure you got the right one on the right side. The, right, the correct one's going to have all the openings to uh, fit to everything. Slide it in this tab into this notch. And then just make sure that it folds up onto everything just right, which it will. Sort of like that. And we do the same thing on the, with the other one on the other side. And yeah, this is a little strange. I mean, I understand they want to get it from one to the other, but... Uh, when the G1 one uh, was completely non-parts forming, when it comes to there's just the main bot transforming, so this is weird. So we're gonna fold this down, and then then we're gonna come around to the back and secure everything from the back. From the back, you're gonna open up this nose cone, and then you're gonna press this in, and you're gonna tab this into place and just kind of clip it in there but you also need to make sure you have your parts all in while you do that and then close this back up that could be on the tricky side actually a little tricky a little tricky i got it all done there um a little tricky these pieces want to kind of shift around and fall out while you're trying to connect that but it's not impossible it's doable and if that's the worst part of it then it's not a big deal we still have some more to go on this guy now for forming the head uh there are some i guess pieces to put in here so i guess this is this extra chair is for this to put plug into here back behind the neck and have a rider in there but then there's also a gap filler you can put in if you'd like to uh, i think it goes in this way gap filler so the parts forming aspect i'm not too turned off by it but some people just utterly can't stand parts for me. Uh, dive it in that way. You're just going to plug it in like so. So that's how that plugs in. And then this piece here, all that can go up the head on and just put all the other parts back on. So not a big deal about the head. And then he's, you want to get the arms positioned the correct way. And then I think before we go any further, we should probably put his stand piece in which I'm not really too worried about that. But anyway, let's get this up here. Yeah, and I guess the stand piece really isn't that much of a nuisance. It just kind of plugs in like so. So it won't be that big of a deal. I can just leave it on there. But there he is. And uh, looks quite nice, I must say. All right, this is pretty much how I'm going to have him displayed, and I think he looks great. He's thinner than what I'm used to with, say, any Jetfire, Skyfire, any that kind of stuff that we see out there. But also, he's as thin as the animation, so that is kind of what it was going for. Uh, this, the original version, of course, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. But the only downside I would say probably is the... It's a little shorter than I would like, although I'm okay with it. It's a little shorter than I would have expected. But it's also, the articulation's a little bit on the lacking, but there's some new things they did with it. So let's go side to side, up and down. Shoulders only go out to about there that I got it, unless I'm doing something wrong here. You can always do the cheater and get more stuff going on like that. And he does have sort of a reverse butterfly to give you a little more stuff. So, I mean, he can catch a football or whatever you would need him to do. Um, I just feel like this tight joint here and feels like a kind of a weak mechanism could be a problem in the future. Uh, biceps, they hold, they go side to side, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, double jointed elbow, which is really good. And then the hands, a lot of the hands, and I didn't show it when I was doing the hands, but the robot ones have articulation in there too, some in and out, front and back, side to side. And this one here, does a good job of holding it has a tab to hold in the gun as to where i'm using just the uh 
deformed hand to hold the gun. So there's no tab, it just kind of slots in because it doesn't really need it. But uh, anyhow, getting into no waste swivel, uh, you're... So this is where they've gone sort of, well, it's part of the, it's part of the Gerwalk, but uh, this kind of folds forward like that. And it only goes to the side. I mean, he's not doing any karate kicks that I can see. I don't know how to cheat that. I can cheat a lot of things, but not a karate kick on this figure. Uh, there's not a, so much, a, much of a thigh swivel, but you make up for it right here in the knee. And then what do we got in the knee? You're restricted by the armor. You might also be restricted by the leg itself. And I need to bring this all down. Down on this level here. So that's kind of as far as we're going with the knee. And then the foot is interesting up and down. And then you might be able to cheat a little bit with a range like this. Just get you a little, just if your pose needs it so that Maybe somewhere in there, you need just a little bit of adjustment because he is a little back heavy, so you might have to adjust that occasionally. All right, it's comparison time. Where does he stand? How does he fit into this whole grand scheme of things? And I got to say, he's a little bigger than Legends, but for a, I would say he would fit Legends better than most. Uh, still a bit small for Mainline and definitely small for masterpiece but I, I think he'd look okay definitely look good in pretty much any robotech display and also would look good with your probably your legends i mean you got to think about it he's supposed to tower over your figures although scale meant absolutely nothing in g1 there's the g1 scale prime with the g1 scale jet fire and then legends Optimus Prime to Legends Jetfire. I feel like it fits Legends more than everything. Speaking of Legends, this is New Age, and I think New Age was better than the Magic Square in this case. I, I usually like Magic Square better, but not in this case. I kind of think that New Age did better. There we go with that. Lastly, the Magic Square Optimus Prime, and again, my favorite Optimus Prime. I will admit, also probably gonna be my favorite Brawl. <laughs> when they come out with that one but that just shows you not for masterpiece but still for all jet jet fire lovers robotech lovers gonna love this all right we're gonna do the close out here on the stand and spinning around and saying well what do, what do i think of them i think that this is a very good looking jet fire i think that they didn't exactly reinvent the wheel but they added a few new touches the articulation is a little bit lacking in places but it gets what i need done for the most part and probably more articulation than i'm going to use but some articulation nuts out there are not going to like the articulation 100 mostly in the hip and leg area and the fact there's no waist swivel but then again there wasn't a waist swivel in the original jet fire and most of the mechs because of a lot of the way they do things i didn't really show that this piece can disconnect and i think it connects to uh sort of another one of these parts on the arm or something like that there's a lot of more weird pieces that i don't really understand or will ever use there's so many parts to this i like that they included the translucent pieces that's something that i've never seen before with a jet fire but really cool overall i'm gonna have a link down below where you can get this at shows you store but it's currently sold out see it's so popular it already sold out and there's going to be a restock and the restock that comes in 2025 is not going to have the some sort of a uh, they says a fluorescent look to it so i i don't have a black light or i would have shown whatever fluorescent it does maybe that'll be something i can do in a short i'm not gonna do a lot of shorts but uh i'm gonna have a couple coming probably but looking at this definitely would suggest for 150 bucks if you're a jet fire collector or if you want something for i would say your legends collection it would even sort of work well in your hasbro but definitely not masterpiece let me know what you think in the comments below like subscribe remember th reviewer code if you go get it show z store tell your man out